Father, we thank you just for just wonderful leadership, always guiding us, always leading us, comforting us, helping us to stay on track. Father, would we declare our hearts up today as we sing these songs, as we sing and worship for you. Father, help us to see how great you are. Help us to just know who you are. And help us to just be able to sing these songs, sing these lyrics in honor of you, God. Father, how thankful we are. Father, would you continue to keep us safe, continue to guide us throughout these hard times, helping us to seek just the wonders in your mercies. Father, we just ask to continue to be with us to open up our hearts today. We thank you. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Let's get ready for worship. I was buried. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was. It was my tomb. Till I met you. It was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my due till I met you. Come on, sing out. You called my name. And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, oh, what a day. You called my name. And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Oh, sing this out. I need it. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. You can't call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have, I have a future. My eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, and I ran out of that grave, you call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of darkness, out of the darkness. Into your glorious day. You call my name. You call my name. And I ran out of that grave. 
out of the darkness into your glorious day. God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven to do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass great is your faithfulness to me great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name Great is your faithfulness to me. Confirmation. Confirmation to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Yeah. Your history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. And great, great. Is your faithfulness to me? Great is your faithfulness to me. From the from the rising sun to the setting, say I will praise your name. Great. Is your faithfulness to me? I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. Sing it, I put. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. He'll never let me down. Oh, oh, sing gray, gray. Is your faithfulness to me? Pray, is your faithfulness to me? From the rising sun to the setting, say, I will praise your name. From the rising sun to the setting, say, I will praise your name. Sing it again. From the rising sun to the setting, say, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. 
And let's sing it again. I put. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. He'll never let me down. Oh, we sing. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. Again, and I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaking all things have passed away your love has stayed the same your constant grace remains the cornerstone. Things that we thought were dead, breathing in life again, because your son to shine on darkest night for all that you've done we will pour out our love this will be our anthem song jesus we love you oh how we love you you are the one our, our hearts adore. The hopeless, the hopeless have found their hope. Your fans now have a All that was lost has. Found its place in you. Oh, you lift our weary head. You make us strong. Instead, you took these rags and made us beautiful. And all that you've done, we will pour out our love. This will be our anthem song. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our, our hearts adore. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. Our hearts adore. Our hearts adore. To adore, we adore you. A heart to adore.
Let's sing it out. Our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus. Our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus. Our affection, our devotion. Poured out on the feet of Jesus, our affection, our devotion. Poured out on the feet of Jesus, we love you. Know how we love you. Hearts adore. Oh Jesus, we love you. Know how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. Um, let's pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, um, I want to thank you for this time of fellowship and worship and message that you have provided for us today, Lord. Um, I want to thank all our teachers and Pastor Daniel, especially, Lord, who you use as vessels to just carry your message to all of us despite the isolation today, Lord. Um, I want to pray for everyone's health, Lord, in this time of pandemic, and especially as students prepare to go back to school soon. I pray that you'll just be with each and every one of them as they go back to school, and that you'll really just keep everyone in LC and all our families, our brothers and sisters safe, Lord. I pray that as we go through this week, Lord, that we'll really just be able to focus on you and not worry about anything that the world tells us to be worried about, Lord. Let us not stress about any upcoming tests, Lord. Let, me, let us not stress about jobs or anything like that, but solely try to focus on you and develop a more personal and intimate relationship with you this week. Um, I pray that you'll just really use Pastor Daniel to deliver what you want to say to us today. And in God's name I pray, amen. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, can you say each other good morning and hello, everyone? On the screen, please turn on your cam. Okay. Okay, I brought one quiz. So, okay, please share the screen. So, wow. So these are the, the very famous buildings around the world. And here is my quiz. So which one, you guess it. Which one is the tallest? And which one is the shortest? So I'm gonna send out a gift. So use your chatting. So first number will be the tallest. The second number will, will be the shortest. So one, two, three, four. The one in Dubai, Shanghai, New York, and Taipei. Just guess from the photo. And the far, who got the answer first in the chatting? And, and the second who got the correct answer in the chatting, I'm going to send out a gift this week. And the last week, the quiz, the winner, it's Joseph Jung and Daniel P. So I'm going to send out a gift this week too, to Joseph and Daniel P. And two other winners for this quiz. Okay, I hope everyone got the correct answer. So the answer will be the tallest building is it's number one. It's the 
I don't know how to pronounce this building where it's in one in Dubai. 2,700 feet, maybe. And the shortest building, it's do, 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 do. <laughs> number four, Taipei 101. So I'm going to choose two students uh, who got the correct answer, and I will send out the gift. The reason why I'm uh, starting with the buildings because we are going to talk about the building or the construction. So let's open our Bible, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. I'm going to read it and you follow and read it wherever you are. Ready? Go. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blow and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blow and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Amen. So back in 1995, I was a middle school student and I saw the news, I watched the news and the huge building uh, broke down itself. Uh, I remember when I watched that news, I thought that it was a movie or it is the North Korea Kim Jong-il, who is the father of Kim Jong-un, fired the missile. So we it is war. That's all I can thought of, but it was not. The, it collapsed itself because of poor construction. The government went out and they investigated and the cause was a poor construction and illegal expansions. Because of this accident, uh, that building was a Sampung Baekhwajeong, Sampung Baekhwajeong, and 500 people dead and more than 1,000 people injured from this accident. So now when we say poor construction, we always uh, begin with Sampung Baekhwajeong. It is kind of a great, the big example of this poor construction. Uh, and some the, the buildings they uh, collapsed or broke down because of poor construction because of its foundation and also the one's life can uh, break down at once because of its foundation. A few weeks ago, the may the Seoul mayor mayor of Seoul city he committed suicide, and right after he got accused. Uh, because of the sexual harassment. And you know what? That mayor, he served more than eight years as a mayor of the Seoul city. And he became famous when he was young because he fought against, he advocated for the victims of sexual harassment. But now in his old age, he, wa he was accused for the sexual harassment. So he's foundation collapsed and he crashed down and he committed suicide. So even if it's a building or one's life, it, the foundation is very, very important. And life is only once for everyone. So in Korean, we say 일생, which means 일, and 생 is life. We have only one. The life is only once for everyone. So everyone wants to build their life very strong and very firm. But what foundation should we have? What foundation, uh, on what foundation should we build our life? So that's what I'm, I'm going to talk about today with you. 
in our passage, if you read it, there are two different types of people. The first type, the one type, um, they were called the wise men. And the second type, different type, another type of men, they were called the foolish men. And they were categorized uh, as a foolish man and the wise man according to where they built their house on. So if you see the Matthew chapter 7 verse 24, uh, it says the wise man who built his house on the rock. So the man who built his house on the rock, he was called wise man. And the verse 26, the one who built his house on the sand, and he was called the foolish man. So I'm going to talk about the foundation is all that matters. So where you, uh, where your foundation is, where you built on your house is all that matters because it's really, really important, not just for the buildings, but for our lives. Uh, and this is uh, my guess. If they have a same budget, the wise man, the foolish man, if they have a same budget, the, the one who built on his house on sand, he may complete his construction earlier than the one who built his house on the rock because uh, the sand on the sand, it is easy. It, the ground is a softer and it's easy to dig. So then easier to put the, some frames on the ground so he could finish its job faster and then also he could save more money because it's easier so that he can invest uh, his the rest of the money on decorations or the, the outer decorations or outer the, the bricks or windows or more luxurious doors and comparing to this house the one who built his house on the rock, it is really, really hard to dig up. Dig up the hole and put the pillars or put the frame into the uh, ground. And it takes more time, it takes more money. So he doesn't have uh, much money than the one who built his house on the sand. So maybe less decoration and less luxurious house and it took the longer, it took longer. So after a few months, the both of them completed their construction. So as we see from the outside, the one in the sand looks more um, expensive, luxurious. But guys, please remember, please remember, the good foundation shines in crisis. The good foundation shines in crisis. Let's look at the Matthew chapter 7, 25 and 27. The when everything was normal, when everything was okay, nothing happens. But when rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blow and beat against that house. The house on the rock did not fall. But the house on sand, it fell with a great crash. Uh, in Japan, uh, they have a frequent earthquake around all around their country. So they, uh, they built a house with earthquake resistance design. There are different, different kinds of methods to fight, against, to fight against the earthquake. And every method, every method that they have, it costs a lot. But the Japanese, they built their house with this system, earthquake resistance design. So when they built the house, they, it costs a lot. When they don't have their earthquake for three years, four years, and the owner, the builder might think, oh, I wasted my money, but no, at when there is an earthquake, the real worth, the true value, the good foundation shines 
in crisis and not just for the earthquake in our lives when there is a crisis and good foundation shines every time every life we will encounter finally and eventually except no one everyone will see will encounter crisis difficulties hardships i want my children don't in don't encounter all these things but for sure they will encounter it because that that is life that is life have you ever heard the term resilience resilience r-e-s r-e-s-i-l-i-e-n-c resilience that is the word very famous word in psychology education and sociology communication and economics do you know what it means the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties it is kind of a mind muscle mind muscle to recover yourself back uh, to get back in shape when you meet the difficulties or the damage so it is kind of a muscle or your capacity to recover from the difficulties uh, it is the word resilience and I uh, researched a little bit about the resilience and resilience means it's a good muscle to recover from the difficulties. And I, when I read some of the articles about the resilience and all the factors, it's about the foundation. If you have a good foundation, it equals you have a good resilience. So it is so important to have the good foundation in our life. And I'm going to talk about now what should be our foundation. What should be our foundation? So number three, build your life upon the good foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Build your life upon Jesus Christ because he is our foundation i believe understanding this metaphor the wise man and foolish man building metaphor understanding this metaphor is not difficult it is easy but we have to know why jesus used this metaphor to teach his disciples so let's go back to matthew chapter 7 Verse 21, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So there were many, many people following Jesus Christ, and they called Jesus Lord, Lord. But Jesus says to these people, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, which means master, master, will enter the kingdom of God, but only one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Not calling my name, not calling me Lord, but one who does the will of my Father will enter the kingdom of God. So the, who is the wise man? In verse 24, it is this, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is a wise man. So someone who does, someone who obeys, someone who practice these words into practice, they are the wise man. And someone who just hear it and does not act upon it is a foolish man. It's a foolish man. So someone who does, someone who act, Someone who obey the word is a wise man. The wise man who, who lay down his foundation on a good foundation. So what's the word? What does the Bible, what does the word say? Shortly, the first, God created this word. God created all human beings, all the animals, 
all the galaxies, the universe, the earth. God created everything, including you and me. And God wanted the good relationship with us. But we failed. We committed. We disobeyed God's commitment. God's commandment. So we we so we are in eternal punishment. But God doesn't want us to be punished. Because God is so loving, He doesn't want us to live in an eternal punishment. So He planned. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, and He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And He punished His Son so that He could rescue us from eternal punishment. So we are, we, we are released. There was an exodus. We were released from the, the domains of the darkness. And now we are into the kingdom of God. You guys already heard many times about this. God, is, God sent his son. Jesus is our savior. And we were uh, saved by his blood. And now we are the sons and daughters of, uh, of God. We have to live our life holy and pleasing to God. We know it. We heard a lot. But just knowing by our, just knowing by our head is very, very dangerous. Can you imagine a baby, the baby with a big head because the, the head is growing, but not the body. Big head with very small body. Can you imagine this kind of baby? It's horrible. If you just hear it, just know it, do not put them into practice, it's like the baby. We have to come to, we have to humbly come to God and pray like this. Lord, Lord, Father, am I the person who speaks 100 things but do not keep even one? Lord, am I the person who knows, who knows but does not obey, does not act upon it, does not practice anything? Am I the person who has a big head but a small body? Lord, if it's me, Lord, if you are speaking to me through this verse, this, through this um, a building metaphor, if I am the one who is a foolish man, who built my life upon the sand, Lord, please forgive me. Teach me. I don't want to spend my life Building my life on the sand. I would like to introduce you the one godly person, godly man who lived his life for Jesus Christ, who laid his life foundation on Jesus Christ. He is the father of our former youth teacher, Sam. And his name is Kang Sangwook Jangunim. He is one of our elder, and he passed away uh, last week. So we had his funeral service last week. And as I attended, I attended his funeral service, and I was so blessed with his life, with his death, with his funeral service. It was, his death was all of a sudden. So all, not just me, but all church members were shocked. We were so sorry. But the life that he showed, he showed to us, and the death, and the, his family, the, the attitude that his family showed us toward uh, their loving husband, their loving father's death, it was very challenging. It was very inspiring. He prayed two weeks ago on Sunday because he, it was his turn to pray in our other service. He prayed to God. 
and a day before his death, he had a family service with his family members. And on that day, the Wednes on that day, I believe it was the Friday, he had a phone call with Pastor Her, who is a senior pastor of our church, and they talk about the, the church. They talk about and the Kang Sang Ok talk about how he loved the Juni Megue. And after the phone call, he he sang a song, he praised God with the guitar. And because and because he had a he always he used to have his business during the night because he had to, had to call to South Korea. So he usually he used to have a nap while he is taking a nap. Uh, he went to the Lord so peacefully. And I heard the testimony from his son and his dad used to say, I am not here to be served, but I'm here to serve. So he served his family and the people around him eagerly. And also his son and daughter as they planned their father's funeral service, the son and daughter, they decided to have this service, not just a funeral service, but funeral Thanksgiving service, because we want to praise God. So they changed the song. We, we prepared the song that we used to sing during the funeral, but the son and daughter asked us to change the song. You know what was the song? Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Can you imagine what kind of son and daughter, what kind of the family can sing, Oh, praise the name of the Lord during their father's death, during their father's funeral service. But they asked it. So we, we sang all together, Oh, praise the name of our Lord, our God. I was so inspired and I was... I was so much blessed and I, I can clearly watch witnesses. This guy, the Kang Sang Ok Jang Nunim, he laid good foundation. And as I watched all the family members, they have good foundation, never be shaken, even in this crisis. So I challenge you, all our teachers and students, we have to live our life. We have to build our life upon good foundation, eternal foundation, which is Jesus Christ. So even when there's difficulties, hardships, and crisis, we may fall, but we will stand again because we have a good foundation. So all of you, please, not just listen to God's word, Practice them, obey them, obey to God's word. That is how we should all lie. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this metaphor. Jesus taught us today, the wise man is the one who hears and obey God's word. Lord, let us not stop to obey your word. Let us not stop learn your word. Please, let us remember we are not here to be served, but to serve others. Lord, help us to remember this. Help us remember what God has taught us with your word and help us to be strong in obeying your word. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, everyone. So we just have a few announcements for today. So the first announcement is please come on time. We noticed a lot of people trickling in late today. Um, please do your best to try to come by 1110. Like in your head, if you imagine that 
worship begins at 11.10, then you'll get here by 11.05, you know? So let's really prioritize um, Sunday service and try to get here by at least 11.10 to prepare your heart. The room will open at 11. And we do have awesome, I think, shout out to middle schoolers. You guys are always here at 11. So really proud of you guys. Uh, would love to see more high schoolers come at 11 and just wait in the waiting room. Um, yeah, so keep that in mind. Um, and then next, make sure you attend your small group. So, you know, like we've been doing, I'm just doing breakout rooms for all of you guys and putting you guys into your small groups. But I do notice some of you guys leave. So try, please don't leave and attend small groups. We do attendance check this way. And this is how you're going to reflect on what you've learned. And this is a very, very crucial portion of Sunday service. Um, so please do attend. I do notice that some of you guys are on the Zoom room twice, like once with your iPhone and once with your laptop or, you know, so I just put both of those devices in your small group room, but um, next time just try to use one of those devices just so that there's less confusion. Um, and also please use your first and last name. Um, right now I could kind of tell who's who, but I know that like once our new fifth graders come up, there are some similar names. So please make sure you use your full first and last name. Online connections, we have, oops, okay, this is wrong right here. This is wrong, it's eight o'clock. Oh, okay, it's eight o'clock for this week. So Bible study with Pastor Daniel is every Tuesday at eight o'clock and I'm sure for those who've been attending can say they've been so blessed and have been learning a lot. So please attend that. Saturday, we have Instagram live challenges with David. Are you guys having fun? Oh, let me turn on the chat. I'm sorry, if you guys have any questions, let me turn on the chat so that you guys are not, okay. So the chat is on now. So yeah, have you guys been having fun with David's Instagram challenge? Yes, say something in the chat, yes. Woo, okay, yeah, seems like a hit. So um, all the staff members, we gathered gifts, like prizes for you guys. And so these prizes right now, the prizes that you've seen so far are like, um, just like the beginning prizes and it'll just get better and better and better. And so please attend the challenges and um, yeah. Please attend the challenges. It'll be on Saturdays between like three, four-ish. And David will always announce it through the Instagram. So just always look out for that. And lastly, Sunday service at 11.15. Okay. Next is our retreat. So we have officially 91 people signed up for retreat. Um, and so we're so excited. This is happening in two weeks, I think. Um, I hope you guys are so stoked. Our speakers all chose their sermon topics. Our seminar speakers all chose their topics and everything is set to go. Um, this is the daily schedule. So this is very important because you know how like at retreat, we can't like yell at you guys like, okay, time for morning devotionals. Okay, time for Zoom seminars. You guys will just have to remember to attend these things. So this is why I show it every Sunday and I probably will show this every Sunday until retreat. So at 10 a.m. you will have morning devotionals in your email. At 2 p.m. there are Zoom seminars by previous retreat staff. And at 6.30 is a pre-retreat activity led by our retreat staff. And then the main session begins at seven and um, retreat will officially end at 9.30 every night. And so we decided, as, so staff decided yesterday that we want to do prizes for you guys. So I won't tell you guys the prize yet, just so for you know anticipation, but basically if you attend, if you do the morning devotionals and you send your reflection to your small group leaders and your small group, then your name will be in a raffle. And then same thing with all the other activities. If you attend all the activities, then your name will be in a raffle. And at the end of retreat, we're gonna choose five of you guys and there's an awesome prize. It's like actually awesome. It's not like snacks. It's actual like very generous gift. So please, please do attend everything. Um, I see the chat blowing up if staff wants to, I don't know, answer questions or whatever's happening. Okay, this is an updated t-shirt pickup schedule. I'm so sorry for this border thing. 
Um, so we decided to do a more simple pickup schedule, like t-shirt pickup schedule. Um, you know, I think originally on the Google Doc, it said like two separate days at like every hour there's a different grade, but we decided just to kind of combine it. Um, so next Saturday, August 1st, from one to three, we're gonna have, what? so from one to two, we're gonna have sixth to 10th graders. And from two to three, we're gonna have 11th to 13th and young adults. Um, if you can't come, like if you're a sixth grader and you can't come here, then you could come here. The reason why we're trying to do this is so that we're limiting the people at church. But if you like really, really can't make it at your hour, you could just come at the next hour. Does that make sense? But try to try to come at your assigned hour because that is um, gonna prevent a bunch of people being at church. So some guidelines, please come with your parents. I know um, some of you guys might get lazy and be like, oh my, go, go pick it up or whatever. But the thing is we, the retreat staff is all, we're gonna be there just to say hi to you guys. And we're also gonna be cr making a drink for you guys. So it's kind of like an event. We want to um, give you guys, we're making this delicious like fruity ice cream like drink that we're like giving to you guys while you guys pick up your shirt. And you get to see real life people. So please do come. Um, if you have siblings, you could come either at your time or your siblings time. And please wear a mask and stay six feet apart. We're gonna meet in the courtyard. So please, please um, put this on your calendar and show up. All the retreat staff is so excited to see you. And if you don't follow us yet on Instagram, please do. We post all of our updates on there. And I think that is it on my end. Okay, let's pray. 이제는 우리 주 예수 그리스도의 무한하신 은혜와 하나님의 크고 극진하신 사랑과 성령님의 감화감도 교통하심이 이제 예수님의 가르침을 따라 우리의 삶의 반석을 예수 그리스도로 삼고 예수님의 말씀을 순종하며 지키며 살아가기로 결단하는 우리 모든 학생들과 선생님들 머리 위에 그들의 가정 위에 이제부터 영원토록 함께하기를 간절히 축원하옵나이다. 아멘. Okay, I'm gonna be putting you guys into breakout rooms. If any of you guys have any wrong, if you guys are in the wrong room, just come back to the main room. Okay, have a good small group. Okay, Jennifer, I will go out and I will announce to the parents about the t-shirts. Okay. Can you send me the good photo? A photo, yeah. I'll send it right now. Thank okay. You. Hi, who is this? I didn't know who Cho Han is, so I couldn't put you in a small group. Okay, Minsok, you're in Josh's group. I will put you, right? I can't hear you guys. Minsoft, are you in Josh's group or what group are you in? Josh's group? Okay.
Okay, she's like, let me put you in the... I can't see. Okay, I'm gonna put you in the right small group, I'm sorry. Um... Okay, now you should be in the right small group. 